Lord Jesus, we worship your holy name. You are our foundation. Lord, it's all about you. Lord, help us today to receive more of you and more revelation of who you are in our lives. Lord, come in power now, Lord Jesus, we pray. And Lord, we just now know that you are the God who is eager to forgive us, the God who is eager to meet with us. And we pray now by the power of the Spirit, Lord Jesus, that you speak to our hearts. And in this moment, just think of those things you've not trusted God with this week, those things you've said and done you wish you hadn't. And just spend a moment handing them to Jesus. He is eager for us to have a fresh start every day. Lord Jesus, let us receive your forgiveness. Knowing that you are the God who can lead our lives into truth, into goodness, into grace. Come in power, we pray, Lord Jesus, on each of us. And let your Holy Spirit flow through us, in us, and around us. Amen. Bless you all. Please be seated and let's say welcome everyone online there. Um, particularly welcome to those on the phone to Evelyn, Joan, Heather and Marie on the phones. It's really good to be here with you and have you with us and everyone else on Zoom and on YouTube that see us later. And everyone here, it's great to see people always in the flesh. And uh, there is room here, everyone. If you want to come back, there is room. Uh, socially distanced masks, but there is room. So please do that. I'm just going to ask Zoe to pop up here a minute and just give us an update on her mum, Caroline Jones. Uh, would you like to do that? There we are. Go. Hi. So, um, as um, most of you may well have heard, um, my mum, Caroline, she had what was believed to be a mild stroke yesterday, which is obviously all quite unnerving for everyone. Um, but basically, she, she went to hospital very quickly. She's now in a specialist um, stroke unit at, I think, Northwick Park Hospital. Um, we haven't really kind of heard that many details, but she kind of seemed cheerful. And um, basically, the, 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 the symptoms did, did seem to sort of kind of reduce a certain amount. So we're hoping that that means it's kind of on the milder end, but we, we haven't really been given much information yet, so we don't really kind of know. But um, she's sort of still in hospital, probably will be until at least tomorrow. We're hoping maybe she might be able to come home tomorrow, but we don't really sort of know yet. But we really appreciate all your prayers. You know, that makes such a difference. And so I do want to thank you all for your prayers and support and everything. So. Thank you, Zoe, and give your mum our love when you see her and a big hug, okay? Yes. And uh, we keep us informed, and we make sure we keep you informed on the prayer, um, on the prayer networks, won't we, as well, on the WhatsApp, yeah. if we hear more, of course, but please keep praying. I know we'll pray for her later, so obviously, um, but bless you. Thank you. Bless you for that. Also, just to say thank you to everyone that um, was involved with Chris Hope's funeral. Um, I thought it was a lovely celebration of his life. Um, but to, again, keep Vicky, Sarah Hope, and Jamie in your prayers, of course, as well. So bless them all. Right, I'm going to ask uh, Paul to come out. It would have been Caroline today, given the readings. So um, that's um, bless her heart. Was, we've got Paul instead. So what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Today's reading is Ephesians 2, 11 to 22. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, that done in the body by the hands of men, remember that at that time, you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. 
His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in, in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Paul. Let us just pray. Lord Jesus, by the power of your spirit, speak to us now that we may go from this place different, having met with you and knowing what our foundation is. In Jesus' name, amen. We finished our series on um, heaven last week and hope. And uh, so we, we continue with a new series this, this week. And actually, I get to do the sort of uh, introduction to that series. And it's about Christian community. And the subject that I've been given is built to last. And I kind of think I've got the best one, actually, in some ways, because this is the foundational one. Um, and you might think, oh, she's going to go on about Jesus again. I am, by the way because I'm always going to go on about Jesus, getting used to it. Um, and this one is so Jesus, it's wonderful. Um, you know, and actually, I, was, I found it really hard to do, to, I was looking at this, and I found it very hard to sort of think, get a hook on, Lord, what, what do you want to really say to the people today? What do you want to say? And then I just thought, it's just Jesus. It's just Jesus. It's just so Jesus. And that's what we've got to get a grips with, is who he is what he is to us and what he means to us. And it's not about head, it's about heart. We're starting this new series, like I say. So what have we learned over this year about what it means to be a Christian community, first of all? What have we learned? It's just a, don't need to shout out answers, don't worry, but I'm just asking you to think about it. What have we learned about what it means to be a Christian community? Um, you know, I've learned it's about relationship. I've learned that it's a priority. I've learned that it matters, actually. I've learned that it's about Jesus holding us together. The wonderful thing about St. Paul is that he loves the church. He loves the church. He sees the church as an extension of Jesus in his ministry. And I think sometimes we separate them in our heads, don't we? We forget that actually we, the church, are part of the whole, part of Jesus' ministry, part of him. In this particular scripture, Paul, as always, to be honest, if we're honest about Paul, he's always going through a difficult time. And he'd been through a difficult time. What a surprise. Many of us here, all of us here actually, at some point, I suspect, have been through a difficult time at this point. All of us, haven't we? We've all had to suffer something, found it difficult, maybe lost people. Maybe just, uh, you know, even m anxieties. I know I've been anxious over this time. There's been stuff that's gone on that I found really difficult. I think we all have. I nearly lost a friend, you know. Loads of stuff that's gone on. We've been through difficult times. And yet for Paul, relationship with God's people is central. Relationship with you and me is central to God's call in our lives. Not just you and me, but all of the Christians exist. God's family. He always keeps saying there is one church, Jesus Christ church, one church. We happen to worship in different buildings, but we all belong to each other. God's people are central. Even if he um, had not seen them, Paul hadn't seen them for a while, he considered them family. Maybe that resonates a bit with us at the moment. I don't know, you know, maybe. They, I know that there's people that I've not seen for a while and I, I went to the hospital the, for various reasons anyway, the other day and I bumped into a wonderful member of our congregation here when it's my vicar who was working there and we had this most wonderful meeting of going, hallelujah, God is good. And do you know, that made my day because I saw someone I hadn't seen for a while who I loved and is part of my family. So I wonder during this time of COVID, how has the family of God become a priority for you? How has it become a priority for you? Who you missed? 
Who have you missed? Who's missed you? Who's missed you? Because it's not all about who we miss. It's who we, we affect the family when we're part of it or when we're not part of it. Before Jesus came, the Gentiles, that means non-Jews, those that are not Jewish, that are not the chosen people of the time, and the Jews are at odds. They're divided. They're divided. And we can talk about a bit that, about division here today. And the first part of the scripture, Paul has reminded them that what it is like to be outside of the kingdom, to not be included, to not belong, he's reminding them. They were uncircumcised. I'm not going to go into the technicalities of being circumcised, don't worry. Um, but actually, you know, it was a physical mark that showed that they were God's people. It was a physical mark. Fortunately for you, actually now, for you men anyway, this becomes a circumcision of the heart. Actually, now it's not a physical, it's the heart that is circumcised. It is the heart that shows who we belong to. It's changed. It's not an outside thing. It's an inside thing that actually should affect who we are outside. The Spirit lives in the true people of God. That shows through how we love. And Paul uses as well in these particular scriptures that kind of concept of near and far away to explain those differences. Once we were far away, now we are near. Now we can know God in our hearts and he changes our hearts because the Holy Spirit is active and alive today. What an amazing God we have. What an amazing God. And we may, may disagree on many things. But if we love Jesus, if we know him, if we believe he is the son of God, then we are united through Jesus Christ. That is the real foundation of our faith, Jesus Christ. That is the difference. That is the difference between us and other faiths. We believe Jesus is God. It can be a challenge, can't it, as well, to agree or disagree with lots of people. It could be a challenge. And we have to learn, I think we really need to learn how to do theology well. We need to learn to disagree well and still love each other. Something I learned at college, I love the fact that I sat around with people that I actually really disagreed with on so many levels, and yet we'd then go, Jesus loves us, and we'd have a hug, and it was okay. And we could work things out. And I grew through that, and they grew through that. I know we grew through sharing. It can be a challenge. We need to learn to do it. How do we grow together, not apart? How do we agree on Jesus and keep him central? A very wise person once said to me, if it's not Christ-centered, keep away from it. If it's not Jesus-centered, keep away from it. And I always look for, where's Jesus in this? Where is he? Is he being mentioned? Is he, does he figure in this? Where is he? Even in the Old Testament, God desired unity, by the way. In Psalm 133, it reads, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. How good and pleasant. In 1 Corinthians 1.10, it reads, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and there be no divisions among you, but you be perfectly united in mind and thought, which sounds pretty impossible when you think about it but not for the Lord Jesus Christ. We are united in him. Today, we're in the situation when the unity of the church is continually threatened, let's be honest. We're looking always for things that divide us, not things that actually bind us. There's always a topic, I'm not going to go into it, there's loads of topics, that keep us from being good news if we're not careful. And we're called to be good news. We need to learn to hold tensions and still keep Jesus central, to agree in mind and thought on Jesus, his grace, his love, his reconciliation through death, so that we could know the Father, the Father God. The living God is through Jesus. Years and years ago, God said to me very clearly in a vision that I had that Satan was in the church. And it's an odd thing, you think, to say that, but then I looked around me and I saw us devouring each other. It is as we devour each other that the kingdom work gets destroyed. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. 
We cannot compromise on who he is. That is the one thing we cannot compromise on. But the ministry of Jesus is one of reconciliation. He brings us together between the Jews and the non-Jews, the Gentiles, between each other, between us and God the Father, reconciliation. And this scripture is very much about reconciliation. The ministry of Jesus is one of transformation through the Spirit that we can know the Father because Jesus shows us him. Do you know, I have never met two Christians who agree on everything. If you meet them, tell me about them, please. I'd like to see that. And I suspect somebody's hiding something. But I have also never met Christians who did not agree on Jesus because you can't actually have that. The definition of being a Christian is to know Jesus is the Savior, the Messiah is God. And that is the, where we are united. Here in Ephesians, Paul is trying to get us to understand what the true church looks like. Go and read all of Paul's stuff. He's so focused on Jesus Christ, isn't he? The Lord, the Savior. So focused on him. It's all about him. Put this into the te context of the time as well. You know, Paul began the church in Ephesus. But he'd been away from them a long time, like I say, but he still cared. The church was now much bigger. It was filled with new believers that Paul didn't even know. But they're still his family. And Ephesus, sorry, was a Greek city in the Roman Empire, the capital of the province of Asia. Paul undertook an initial visit to the city in Acts 18. You can read about that. And then he spent the major part of his third campaign, amounting to at least two years, establishing the congregation in Ephesus, Acts 19. So he's got relationship with them. He's building a relationship with them. He's getting to know them. But there's lots of stuff that's happening when he's not around. Physical absence didn't prevent him being interested in them, though. He heard about their faith. He heard about them. He's interested in them. One church... His church, Jesus Christ Church. One church. I'm going away for three months, has anyone heard? <laughs> Next week actually will be my last Sunday, just to warn you, because um, I've got study leave. But while I'm away, I'm praying there's an increase of faith here. And I can tell you, I'm going to be praying for you. Out of mind, sorry, out of sight is not out of mind. I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be praying that I come back and I see more people come to faith, that there's greater faith, that things grow. Because it doesn't depend on me. I'm not your savior. Jesus Christ is. I'm not your savior. Anything I talk to you and preach, go and test, go and look at it. Go and look at it for yourself. Look at the scriptures for yourself. See what you think. But if it doesn't lead you to Jesus... I can tell you, it won't be right. If I don't lead you to Jesus, I'm not right. We are here to lead people to the Savior. You are the family of God. Jesus is the center here. He's the center, okay? Anything where Jesus isn't preached and central isn't right, and it won't bring life. It won't bring life. See, St. Paul wanted, wanted the people of God to know more of God. He desired them to be a community that has more knowledge of Jesus. I do too. I want us to know more of him. Don't you want to know more of Jesus? More revelation of his presence and his love for us. There is always more of Jesus. There's always, always more of him. And I don't apologize for keep saying his name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Amazing God. Are you growing in the knowledge of Jesus? Are you growing in your relationship with him? As individuals and corporately as God's church today, are we growing in him? Do we lead people to the Savior? In John 17, 3, John reveal, sorry, Jesus reveals his heart for us. He says, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ in whom you sent. That we may know the one true God, and Jesus Christ, the Father sent. 
To know God is to know ourselves. We are made in the image of God. We are to become more like Jesus. Go and read about his character. It's challenging, isn't it? He comes along the imperfect. He lifts them up. He frees them. He walks alongside those that are oppressed. And he says, there is hope. There is more. See, Paul desired that the people of God know and understand how amazing it is to know God and how this has to be the center of our lives and our community of believers. Central is faith in Jesus Christ, the core, the foundation. Without him as the cornerstone, which is mentioned in that scripture, if you notice, everything else fails. If we are not built on Jesus Christ, who he is, we fail. The stone, you see, is laid first. Join in other stones. If you're building and all this, I know Trevor probably understands it far better than I do, so forgive my simplicity of it. This is where you find answers, though, as well. They write things on that stone that say about who made it and the dates and stuff like that, about the building. And the other stones are laid on top of it. And as a community... Jesus has to have that place as he unites us. He has to be the cornerstone. He is the one we get the answers from. He is the one that our faith has to be built on. He gives us access to the Father through the Spirit. And we are called to build in his name. Are our hearts open to receive Jesus? In the Bible, the heart is the core of emotions, core where the emotions are. It's the place of inner self and personality, and that's where that is formed, in the heart. You can read about how God talks about the heart. Our hearts can be soft, they can be hard. And Paul hopes the people of God will grasp the true revelation of God's love in their minds so that it transforms their hearts, transformed hearts towards each other, to God's church, God's people, to the people that don't know Jesus, the people who don't know that God loves them, transformed hearts. Where's our priorities? Am I Christ-centered? The truth we believe about Jesus affects absolutely everything we do, everything we say and everything we are as God's people. His mission is our mission. His mission is our mission. We hope to be more like Jesus. His spirit lives in us as a community of believers. This is the foundation. We hope that his glory will be seen here and through us every single day. This is our calling as God's people, to be like Jesus to others so that they come to see his glory and know his grace. God's grace. Messed up people helping each other, knowing that Jesus is in the middle of it, getting alongside each other, showing grace and love. And this is not a hope based on a fairy tale. He died, he rose, he lives. This comes from a hope of knowing what it means to know that Jesus is alive forever. My God lives. What does that mean to me? What does it mean to you? What does it mean? My God lives. He's the living God. And even when I suffer, he is with me in it. Paul, love St. Paul, don't you, for various reasons, but he reminds us in Romans 18 that his glory will blow all suffering away. My God is going to deal with all the things that are wrong. Our amazing God. The suffering in the world is not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The family of God with Jesus in the center, revealing the Father and empowering us through the Spirit. He walks with us in our hard times. And I want to tell you, We suffer, and we will 
suffer while we're here on earth. But there is hope of glory that goes beyond it. And God is in the middle with us. And we should be in the middle of it with each other. We're not to look at the world, though, as others do, but through the eyes of Jesus, with hope. Living God. And that may not always be easy. And as we start to return, particularly to the outside world, (laughs) after this year, we're going to have to really unpack some of the stuff that's gone on inside of us and and the stuff that's gone on and the suffering that we've seen, maybe in a new way, and maybe that's a good thing. Challenging us to look at things differently. But as we acknowledge this, we also acknowledge the grace of God and hope of life in him. Out of it, God will bring great things. Paul in his writings speaks about in God's inheritance in us as well, doesn't he? We receive it all. We receive everything that God has for us. Everything Jesus died for to bring to us. We receive it. God has so much on offer for us. What does it mean to understand that you belong to God and that you are a child of God? What does it mean to you to be a child of God? What does it mean to know that you belong to this amazing family? And Paul reminds us of God's great power all the time, it, that it is in work, working in us. What does it mean for God's, God's people to be equipped with the Holy Spirit? I touched on that last week when we talked about the gifts, didn't we? To be equipped by the Holy Spirit, God's power working in us. God's power is very different to the world's power. It can be very quiet. It can be very noisy, but it can be very quiet in the ordinary in the everyday, and we sometimes miss it. But Jesus is always working in us. His work power is working in us to release gifts for us, to use in the kingdom work. Together as God's people, has called and equipped us, and he wants to release us to do what we have been called to do, his mission, to lead others to the Savior. In our weakness, Jesus brings us strength. I wouldn't stand here now without the Lord Jesus Christ. I wouldn't be here now without him. In my weakness, he brought me strength. How many of us can say that? I know so many of you around this room can. And the God that was is the God that's now. He will bring us again out of weakness into strength. God's power is made perfect in weakness. Because it's him, not us, that is the solution. Today, in his strength, not our own, we will see this community change. We will see St. James change and Holy Trinity change, and we will see our neighborhoods changed in his strength, not our own. Paul teaches the Christian community that prayer is our foundation. Because prayer is about seeking the Savior in his vision and ways and agenda. The presence of God should be our goal. The presence of God will change us and mold us and make us different. This is the true church, to know God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it is through being in Christ that every spiritual blessing descends upon God's people from the heavenly places. Because we who were once far off are now brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. He died so that all can know him and all can live forever as one. We have good news to tell. There is a saviour And all are welcome. But not all know that there's a saviour. And not all know that they can accept him and be loved by him. He is the way to salvation. In verse 14 of the scripture read, Paul talks about the dividing walls of hostility, doesn't he? So often we put up barriers to stop others receiving Jesus. 
It's almost like you have to do a this, that, and the other, and ah, maybe God will let you in the gates. No, it's grace. He died, he rose. Accept and receive him. You're in. We then work out our salvation. We then work it out. What does it mean then? How are we going to live it? How a difference is going to make? But we receive it because God did it. Jesus did it. Jesus brings peace through death, his death, through his sacrifice so that we could know peace through his spirit. He said, forgive as you have been forgiven. That's a pretty tall order. How can we break down hostility today? How can we love and embrace the oppressed, the marginalized? Harry? Well, go and read about Jesus. Go and look at what he, who he was. Look at his character. And do likewise. He included and embraced the imperfect. Thank goodness I wouldn't stand here. Jesus brings reconciliation and peace. And this is the heart of the message gospel, the gospel message, sorry. There is no barrier to us knowing God. And this is the message we must share with the world and live in our lives today. Repent means turn around. Go the other way. Go Jesus' way. Go the right way, in other words. Follow him. Be his disciple. Receive and belong. And in verse 19, Paul describes Christians as family. Now, we're all made of different materials. In other words, we all have different gifts, but we are all needed. All of you are needed in the kingdom of God. All of you can make a difference. In verse 20 to 22, two, two, it mentions the prophets and the apostles. So we represent, representing the Old and the New Testaments. How can we build on the story of God and his people, in other words? Taking the word of God seriously. How do we build on this? Taking discipleship seriously. Acting as a family until we really become that family. Where Christ is central. This year, I really appreciate my family of God. The family of Jesus Christ. Let us build the church as the apostles did. The one true church built on Jesus Christ as the foundation to all Christian communities. Built to last. That will last. And the final part of this scripture is a reminder that we are part of the glory. You and I, we're part of the glory, part of the construction. And what a privilege to be kingdom workers, eh? What a privilege. God's work is our work, my work, your work. And we are to lead the world to Jesus together. We get the privilege of doing that with him. The Christian community is built to last on the foundation of Jesus Christ and his presence, the Savior. He will build his kingdom. He will build his kingdom. We sang that a minute ago. Great choice. He will build his kingdom. Let us be united in this so that we can be part of the revival in this nation. Often when things happen like what's happened now, we see God move in great power. I don't know about you, but I want to get on that wave. I want to see what Jesus is going to do with this. When we do that, we become people of love, people of grace, people who give space for each other to be part of the whole, make room for each other. The question I'm going to leave you with today is, how can you think and act like a member of God's family united in Jesus, even when you disagree how do we act like God's, fa um, God's family united in Jesus even when we disagree? How do we learn to do a disagreement well but keep Christ central and foundational and the word of God central and foundational? And how can we, you bring peace and reconciliation in a church instead of division? How do we bring that together, peace and reconciliation? The challenge to us is to be the family of God who engage in prayer as a priority, I really want to see this next few years the prayer meetings being the most attended. Seeking God's presence. The challenge is to be the true church with Jesus central. The hope is that we encounter God every day and keep encountering God. 
And that will change us as a community of believers and make a difference to how we engage with the wider community. Jesus first, and the rest will be in the right place. So let us call on the Spirit to fill us, equip us, and reveal Jesus to us more so that we can lead others to hope. Let's just pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, may we never be tired of saying your name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that he is the Lord and the Savior. Jesus, reveal yourself to us today more than we have ever known you. Not just in this room or to those that are watching on YouTube or Zoom, but in this whole nation. May the power of the Lord Jesus touch this nation afresh and anew like a tidal wave. Help us, Lord, to pray in your name. And fill us now to overflowing that whatever we're carrying, whatever struggles we have, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into the middle of those struggles. That we will trust you. And Lord, help us to give you away to others, to share the gospel message. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us, transform us, refresh us. Amen. I'm going to ask Laura to come and bring us some intercession prayers now. Thank you, Laura. Father God, we give you thanks that we have this opportunity to meet together both in person and online. I pray for unity in the church, both at St. James's and worldwide. I pray we will always faithfully proclaim the name of Jesus in the teachings of the Bible. I pray for transformed hearts and that we will be faith focused and faithful to the service of Jesus. I pray that even in dark and difficult times, people will see the hope of the church and come to know you as a result. We pray for COVID-19 around the world. We pray especially for countries with high cases at the moment, so for South America and Southern Africa. We pray for their hospitals and for their health workers. We pray for wisdom for the political leaders to make good decisions. And we pray that individuals will be protected. We pray for the fair distribution of vaccines. We pray that countries will be generous and for vaccines to be available where they're needed most. Let's pray for Caroline. We pray for rapid healing and peace for while she's in hospital. And we pray for the family of Chris Hope, that they will know your love and your peace and have support at this difficult time. Let's pray for St. James's as the country opens up. Pray for decisions regarding outreach events and pray that people will feel able and safe to return. We pray for the persecuted church around the world. We pray for Christians in India who've been looked, overlooked by government aid through the COVID crisis. We pray that God will provide for their needs and they will continue to serve God. As we finish in prayer, we will join together to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Laura. We're going to now have Peter and Paul. Well, Peter, probably. No, Paul. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And hopefully you can all celebrate a male role model in your life or remember someone who has made a difference to you. I would like to say my role model is Paul. Even though he is a bit bossy, at least he has given me my very own Zoom room and encouraged me to be myself. Yes, a big green monster. So I am going to read this poem and hopefully it will mean something to you all. It's titled Father. At four years, my daddy can do anything. At seven years, my dad knows a lot, a whole lot. At eight years, my father doesn't know quite everything. At 12 years, oh well, naturally father doesn't know that either. At 14 years, father, hopelessly old fashioned. At 21 years, Oh, that man is out of date. What did you expect? At 25 years, he knows a little bit about it, but not that much. At 30 years, maybe we ought to find out what Dad thinks. At 35 years, a little patience. Let's get Dad's assessment before we do anything. At 50 years, I wonder what Dad would have thought about that. He was pretty smart. At 60 years, my dad knew absolute everything. At 65 years, I'd give anything if dad were here so I could talk this over with him. I really miss him. He is amazing. Well, I don't know about you, but I thought that was amazing. It made me think, hmm. Well, it's that time. Yes, it's birthday times. So this week we have Simon Wiltshire. Hi, Simon. Hi. Michelle Georgia and Joy Murphy. Here we go. Three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you. We pray. Live for Jesus. Dear Simon. Dear Michelle. Dear Joy, happy birthday to you. Have a great time and enjoy your birthdays. Hooray! I think Peter just wants some chocolate, don't you? <laughs> Bless him. Okay, then, we're going to have notices now. First of all, text given, we've got that one. Reminder, thank you for all those who are given to Give Day as well. Um, I haven't got updated number yet, have we? 9,000-ish, not including Give Day. So that's fantastic. Thank you so much for giving. You can continue to give, of course, in the next few weeks if you want to. But thank you so much. That will go towards all the mission stuff we're doing and everything we're doing in this church um, to reach out. So thank you so much. Uh, text given, there you go, 70450. Um, and St. James, space, however much. You know that, you know now, don't you? Let's move on. Okay, morning worship reminder here. Please do come to church. It'd be fantastic to see you here if you feel confident enough. If not, continue on Zoom, of course. Uh, prayer ministry. I know that Uzo and Jenny are on today, um, but if you want prayer, you know, we just talked about prayer. It's also about learning to pray for each other. My dream, and I know Rich and Christine's dream, is that one day we'll all just be praying for each other and it'll be all member ministry. It's important we do that, but we do need to have guidelines for that and stuff like that. So we have Jenny and Uzu who are willing to pray with people. So please do, do ask for prayer. Do get prayed for and uh, 
And do, when we're teaching about praying for each other and that, come along to it and learn. You know, it's really important that we expand the prayer ministry team to the point where we're all in it. Isn't that right, Rich? Thank you. Um, Rich and Christine do a fantastic job, so please do keep praying for them as well as they continue to build this ministry in our church. Wednesday reception, reflection, every Wednesday at 10 a.m. here live. We do the reflection and live on Facebook. And then the church is open. You can come in for quiet prayer. And Jim's Cafe is open again, 10 to 12.30. Um, been fantastic to watch how many people's lives have been changed there. Um, you know, with the, the different people that um, have come through those doors, we have been so blessed by God is doing. So continue to pray for us. And Citizens Advice is obviously available then as well and other help. So do please continue to, to pray for us and support us and come along. Holy Trinity, today, four o'clock, reflective service. Jenny is preaching today actually on healing. So come along for that. It's a short service, um, but it's lovely. It's a presence of God there. Um, Steve Craggs leads the worship. It's very sensitive. Um, so we have a great time there. So come along at four o'clock today. Yeah, next one. Bible study next, final Bible session. Final session for this bit before September. It'll start again in September. Um, we'll be on the 24th of June at 8 p.m. on that Zoom. If you've not been before, just join us because it, they stand alone and we're going through the Bible and we go off into our little groups, but please do. And then I say, this will be the final one, then September we'll start again. Next one. Garden Tea, but women's, women's, women's Garden Tea Party um, on Sunday the 27th of June at 2.30. Come up to Holy Trinity, Lions Down. We're hoping it's going to be nice weather. There will be tea and cake in the garden. And after that is our reflective service again. And actually, Lily's going to share on um, that one. So to come along and hear Lily on the 27th. I know she's inspiring, isn't she, Lily? We love her. So we want to hear from her. So that'll be on the 27th at 4 p.m. Next one. Oh, right. David, do you want to come and give your notices? There we are. Back with you again. Thank you, Luke. Uh, yeah, nature, we, we've been wondering what to do going forward, and we've come up with these three little items. A lot of people now may be possibly going away. We know Laura's traveling around for about three months on her study leave, and we expect to, this is our chance to keep tabs on her <laughs> with a little tracker underneath, but we expect loads of views to come back, Laura. So anyway, the first thing, first thing is about the British landscape and wildlife, and uh, if people can send you pictures around that, let us know where they are. We're going to try and put something together for that. Uh, so vistas, anything. So like if you're at Alexandra Palace, you can take a view over London and there's all that sort of thing. But no buildings on their own because that's coming in a minute. Uh, the second one is the wonderful world of colours. So flowers are out there like anything this year. Uh, the brightness of those flowers. Flowers on their own. If you could take pictures of those, an example there of an azalea I took earlier this year. So, and the third one came from an idea from one of the youngsters. They sent me a picture. Uh, in celebration of the built environment, there's a huge amount of buildings around which are landmarks, well-known buildings, and we'd just like to see pictures of those possibly. Uh, it can be arty, it can just be a picture of them, so anything on that. So there's three different things there. We're going to run it for quite some time going through to the end of September and October to give people plenty of time to go away, take pictures. Uh, you don't have to go away to take the pictures. You can still take pictures of wildlife in the garden, anywhere at Trent Park, anything like that. So please do that. Okay. And I'm happy to take some more pictures from the past year or so as well for that, which you may not have sent me previously. So, okay. Uh, that's that. We'll do that. The other thing is, uh, unfortunately, many of you know Mike Macy passed away couple of weeks ago uh, and we've been wondering what to do from St James's and we've been thinking about doing a book of memories so if you do have a little memory or something of Mike which you could just write to myself Christine or Zoe are you happy for that as well Zoe and uh, and if you've got any pictures at all of Mike at all and anything he did and he did loads here we know uh, uh, please so send those in to us as well so uh, We'd love to that, and we're going to try and put a little photo book for, together for Anna. Uh, it doesn't have to be done in time for the funeral. The funeral is going to be on the 29th of June at 11 o'clock. Uh, 
we know the church is virtually full already for people going to it. But uh, uh, we are hoping to stream it. Please note the hope. Uh, they haven't got streaming set up in the church, but we're hoping to try and do something, even if it's just an audio feed. So just watch this space, and we will try to share that as soon as we know what the login details are. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, David. Have we got a next one? Or is that it? That's cool. Um, just to say about my study leave as well, we'll be away July, August, September completely. I come off all the WhatsApp groups, but there are people that will let you know stuff that's going on those. Um, we've linked that in. I also have to step back from all my work here and at Holy Trinity, anything I do. So you can't just contact me about stuff. I just have to ask you to sort of just uh, not contact me uh, generally about anything sort of sort of to do with, you know, if St. James is burnt down, don't tell me, basically, okay? Um, <laughs> but Because it's better, I don't know, really. Um, but it's just part of the study leave that I step back and from everything. Uh, there are people here that you can talk to. You know, you can talk to Carol and Luke and Simon and, uh, you know, and PCC members. Please do look after each other and carry on doing that. And I will be praying for you. Um, of course, and I will be sending photos and stuff like that, so definitely, so I'll let you know how I am, okay, along the way, so I will send bits to let you know, but I just have to step back from it, but um, God is good, he will look after you all, it's very hard to do, believe me, very hard to do, I'm going to have to resist coming home and going, so how is everything, you know, and it's going to be very difficult for me, so um, do pray for me on that. Um, also, um, Martine, we need the Martine then, don't we? And then Paul is going to come speak to us, aren't you? Hello. We've got Martine. Um, food shortages this, this week, week please. please. Um, um, we've, we've got, got, got rice, rice, either, either 500, 500 grams, grams or a kilogram. kilogram. Shampoo. Shampoo. Deodorants, Shampoo. deodorants, female ones, ones please. please. Sugar, Sugar. Um, um, either again 500, 500 grams, grams or a kilogram. kilogram. Pasta, Pasta sauces. sauces. And, and bags, bags for life, life whether they, they are new ones or clean used ones, please. And, and as, as normal, normal, dropping it off at church, church, dropping it off at food bank, bank same breeze in New Barnet or Cockfosters, Waitrose, Whetstone or High Barnet, Mari Shoes in the Village or at the co op in Mays Lane. Thanks ever so much and take care, everybody. Thank you. Bless you, Martine. And Paul, would you like to come and share with us? It's okay, I'll, I'll use this one. Um, just a quick message. Um, starting on the 18th of Gi July, hopefully, we're going to start Kids Church live in the church again. But we're going to start very small, one group. Um, we'll see how that goes, progresses, and then hopefully by September, we can progress and open all our groups up again. So if you're thinking as a family you want to come back as a family, it's now going to be able to do that from the 18th. Um, but to enable that, we do need volunteers. It can't just be one or two people. We do need volunteers. So if you feel it on your heart that you want to help, let me know. I know some people have already re responded and let me know, and thank you very much for that. If you can't help, what we would like is that you pray about this and keep us in your prayers for safety, for the children to be able to come back and feel part of our family again. It's really important that our families can start to feel they can walk back into our church and it is safe and that they can start to listen to the God's word. So please keep that in your prayers. Hopefully as well in September, we will be opening all of our groups and that will be Zone uh, message. Um, we'll carry on with our youth Bible study. But to do this, we need volunteers. Quite a few of our volunteers have moved on or have decided they can't anymore. So please, if you feel you can be a volunteer, let me know. Um, I, we can talk about it and see how you can help. So keep us in your prayers. Think 18th of July, our children could be walking back into our church. We could be starting a bit of normality again. So thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. And can I just say that Paul can't do this alone. Uh, we want to see children's ministry here. So even if you can only do it once in a while or once, I think, you know, just talk to him because he cannot do this alone. He needs um, our help to, to do this family ministry. And uh, so I encourage you to really pray about whether God's putting that in your heart or making it something that, you know, you feel that you could offer because um, 
We want to see our families back and our children back, but he cannot do it alone. That's all I'm going to say. So please pray for him and everyone else. Come to the end of our service. Uh, reminder, all you men, you get chocolate, okay, at the end. And uh, don't forget, if you want to light candles well and remember and just say a prayer, do that. Uh, would you like to stand if you can, if you're here? God bless you all at home as well. Mind you to think about those questions, that question of how can you, how can you affect the church for unity, not division? How can you learn to disagree well? How can we as a church learn to disagree well? but still keep Christ center. But let us just pray. Lord Jesus, we praise you and thank you. You are God who's mighty. You are God who's loved us. May we go from this place thinking about Jesus, you, Jesus, and all that means to us, and pour your Holy Spirit out to us. You are an amazing God. And uh, next week we will be doing um, communion. Um, so I just want to say that. And at home, if you want to make sure next week you have your uh, drink and a bit of bread or whatever um, with you as well. So we'll be doing communion next week. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen.